So I put out a spoiler for your review for Peter Pan and Wendy, and now I'm going to go through and just talk about my spoiler review for what I think of Peter Pan and Wendy. Just get into, if you guys haven't seen this movie yet, I will have spoilers closer to the middle to ending point of this video. I actually will start out by saying my favorite thoughts since I watched it three weeks ago came to because really that first video I put out was just my first thoughts where I thought about it right after watching it I basically you mean with that YouTube short I literally just finished the movie that very like a couple no more than an hour later I quickly you know got my setup and took my phone and just recorded it very quickly so that's that's where that's coming from is that it was just like my first thoughts like right after finishing it, I was still in the hype era of like I mean wow I can't believe this was actually good at all so now that I've had some time to think about it these are my thoughts I mean just overall I'm like just realizing that I'm like most of these are negative but it's like what I think of it later on and some of this comes from the point of I was thinking about this and then I heard other and I came upon other YouTubers talking about this movie and they brought up the same points and I'm like I actually I should have brought that up doing stuff like that so it's mainly some of these all come from the standpoint that I didn't think about right away for example something that I was thinking about a couple of days after putting out that review was that of Lost Boys I was like oh yeah they did a great job making it diverse and all that kind of stuff but then I started thinking about it and I'm like but what do I remember about the Lost Boys really they were just there they were just like, I mean, a part of the group. They were there. I don't know. There was nothing about them. That, but by the end of the movie, I was kind of like, yeah, I know this one and this one and this one. The original, I think a problem is a lot of people run into is that they are saying this is terrible. Not looking back at the original. I haven't seen the original in a while and I will have to watch it again. Probably should have watched it before putting out this review. But the fact of the matter is, even the original, it's not as perfect as everyone thinks with... They only have a couple scenes with the Lost Boys, you don't really get to know them that well, but you just get to know them, they're troublemakers. And they don't do as much of that, they're not... I think one of the biggest problems with this movie is that they take out the fun, troublemaker aspect to Peter Pan and Lost Boys and all that kind of stuff. And they just made it so they're overly kind of serious kids. So I don't know, that's a big problem with this. Yeah, but overall, the Lost Boys are just... They're forgettable. They're not memorable one bit. And I, I don't know. I, I didn't really think about that before because the fact of the matter is I enjoyed the movie, but I didn't really think about how, yeah, there was no memorableness about The Lost Boy. Another thing that is a point that some pe other people brought up too, and I, I mean, the more I heard people talk about it, the more I'm like, okay, I see where you're coming from. It is true. The story is very chopped together. Now, for you, some of you people who are like, okay, what, what are you bringing new to the table with this review? What are you bringing that, like, you're just saying that all the other people brought up this point too. The fact of the matter is, while people, a lot of people say that, the big thing is, a lot of people say that this video, that this movie is boring, and it's terrible, and it's terribly chopped together and all kind of stuff. I don't think the story is terribly chopped together. As I was going to mention, that I personally think if I remembering back to when I've watched the original, it was also this happened than this happened. Even more so than this movie. I think this movie might have a little bit more flow in this to it. In the original, right? You have it so they go to Neverland. Then they have it so Peter Pan and Wendy visits the mermaids. Then they suddenly figure out that they need to go save Tiger Lily. Then they have to do this, then that, then this, then that. And it's kind of more like jumping back and forth for a bunch of different stuff going on. You could have taken out the Indians and it wouldn't have made a difference, which is a really big thing that I was going to mention about this, is that they did take out the Indians most part. Well, as you guys all might know, based on the videos I put out of reacting to these, the trailers for this movie as it was coming out, I was mentioning how one of the best things they could do with this is like, really fixed with the problem they had with the Indians. In the original, they had, of course, the really racist song about what makes the red man red, all kind of stuff like that. When I think, when you think back a bit, why was the Indians in the movie in the first place? They actually make it so Tiger Lily has more reason to be in the movie than in the original. The original just had it so that they met these Indians, and it was kind of like, I mean, it was a thing that happened. They could have taken it out and the story wouldn't have changed at all. It's like they could have taken out the mer mermaids, and they actually do take out the mermaids for the most part out of that, out of this version of the movie, and it wouldn't have made a difference. I feel like 
wow, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, this movie is terribly chopped together. Guess what? The original wasn't really like straightforward either. It's a little fun adventure. I feel like this one even has more. I mean, they go to Neverland. Two characters get kidnapped and gets brought to Pirate Cove. And they have to rescue them. They go back to their little fort. Then who captured them. The, they have a fight. The movie ends. Right? The thing is, I feel like it's a little more straightforward than the original was. With this, then that, then this, then that, then this, then that, and then the ending. So I feel like there's actually better chop together than the original. Yes, the storyline is, the story is just, it's not well put together for the most part, but I think it's not terribly put together. Another thing that other people have brought up, and I, yeah, yeah it's true, I, I was just not expecting to have it, so I didn't put that much, you know, business on it, because the fact of the matter is, Neverland was kind of not as, I mean, I, I mentioned in my original video on this, that Neverland was kind of, looked a little bland, I wish it was more, I mean, it looked kind of brighter, but it was a little bit too, still a little bit bland. Some of that comes from the live action versus cartoon, you can't, for the most part. I think of one thing they could have, they definitely should have done, is remembered, Neverland is not in England. Neverland is this tropical island, as some people have, you know, done research and Dive, deep dived into where Neverland is, it would probably be in South America. It's a tropical island with crocodiles and flamingos and stuff like that. You should make it more tropical. So I guess that's a big problem with this is that, yeah, when I think about it more, I'm like, yeah, maybe they should have made this a tropical island instead of kind of more looking like anywhere in England type island. It was kind of bright, it had some fun moments, but the fact of the matter is, I do, the more I think about it, I'm like, wait a second, yeah, they should have made it as a tropical island, like it was in the original story, in the original movie, book, all that kind of stuff. They shouldn't have made it a tropical island, because that makes sense. It was not a tropical island. They had moments that were fun, but yeah, I think they could have made it a tropical island, and had a lot more fun with that. One of the biggest thing that a lot of people bring up about this movie that I didn't really think about, but a lot of people bringing up is that this movie is really boring. I don't think this movie is boring. I don't know where people are coming from with that because I don't think this movie is boring. I think it's a lot of fun. I like this movie. I, for the most part, I don't think I don't think there was really any point in this movie I was bored. I don't know where people are coming from that this movie is boring. Yeah, it's not the best movie, but it's not boring. I, I don't know. I would have to disagree with those other critics and all on this because I actually thought that it was not, it wasn't, of course it wasn't the best, but it wasn't boring in my mind. I thought it was, I mean, good for the most part. I don't think, I don't want to say it's the most interesting movie, but it, it was a fun watch. I didn't get bored while watching it. Alright, so now let's quickly just get into spoilers and start talking about the spoiler elements because that's really some of the best moments come from the spoiler. So, starting off with Jess. Hook in this movie is when they, at the beginning, as I said in my original video on this, Hook in the beginning, I was kind of iffy about. I don't, I wasn't sure that I wanted to like Hook. He was kind of just another pirate. And, but he's like, I saw him warmed up to his performance a little bit, but I really, what really kicks this off and makes this a really good version of hook in my mind is again spoilers if you guys haven't seen this movie and you don't want to actually know what happens you can always you know click off of this but if you don't care i guess i can explain quickly for those and for those who you know when they watched it they somehow already forgot about what his story is let me just quickly explain his background is this he was the first lost boy james james who just eventually became hook and it's really one of the most interesting things, right? They make it so, as they explain in the movie, he wanted to see his mother. He wanted, he, he wanted his mother back again. And he, he like, had a longing to see his family and be able to go back to normal war, the normal life again. And Peter did not like this. So Peter kicked him out and said, you are banished now because you have the desire to want to actually have a normal life. Like, it makes kind of sense why Peter Pan would do this. Not 
I will say there's not as much this Peter Pan. I think this Peter Pan wouldn't do this, but the Peter Pan from the original would definitely do this. Peter Pan from the book would definitely do this. The troublemaker Peter Pan would do this. And so basically, he gets kicked out, and he's wandering to try to find his way back to the normal world when he gets picked up by pirates and raised by Smee. And that's how he becomes... He walks up in the ranks and becomes Captain Hook. And eventually, he sails back to Neverland and comes upon Peter again. And that's how the rivalry got started. I mean, Hook hated him now because he kicked him out just because he wanted to have a family. He wanted to, you know, be a boy. Be a little boy who could grow up and all. Very interesting story. Again, I will talk about it in a couple minutes about why it's so interesting. But I think when it gives this... I think the point thing is it gives this element of it makes sense why Hook does what he does somewhat. And it gives this element of you can kind of feel bad for Hook. And, but not just that, but then it's just like, it shows how Peter Pan, like, not this Peter Pan, again, I think, and this is something I should have brought up in the original a little bit more, but I don't think, I enjoy this Peter Pan, but some of the choices they made, like, to add on this whole thing with Hook, they should have done that with a Peter Pan that was more of a troublemaker, because then it makes sense why this Peter Pan, why that P why the troublemaker Peter Pan would chop off Hook's hand. Doesn't make sense in this one. This one, he's kind of sad that his best friend has turned against him and that Hook is his enemy. If you think about it, it makes it kind of stupid that like, oh yeah, his best friend comes back to Neverland and his first response is chop off the guy's hand, throw it to crocodiles. It's kind of like, why? Why like that that's a really mean thing to do to your best friend. But it also it, but it gives this element of like, I mean, besides, I mean, of course the whole thing with Peter Pan is it gives this element of like he's supposed to be representing growing up. Like in the original he was supposed to be like terribleness of growing up. And I think some of the add to this is they all they have this element of he's supposed to be an example of why these kids don't want to grow up. But then later on, you figure out that he's also the example of why you should grow up and why you should allow yourself to grow up and to be able to, you know, really be able to, you know, grow up and be able to, you know, live a normal life. And while he didn't get that, there's this element I really liked about the whole thing of him searching for his mother and how he wanted to be back with his mother and his you know, family again, because it really shows that, yes, kids should want their family, should want to be able to grow up. And I really think that's interesting having that background story of Hook where he's the first lost boy and that he's he's really what kicks off somewhat what makes it so Wendy's like, actually I do want to grow off up is that she sees Hook, someone who wanted to grow up and never got the chance to because he was stuck with these pirates and stuff like that. I find that really interesting. On that point, think about more the character of Wendy. At the beginning, she says, I don't want to grow up. And then the rest of the movie, she's kind of like, kind of being like a mother to all these people and just overly being too grown up and all. And I feel like there's this element they could have done more of making her seem more kid-like. Yes, in the original, they had this feeling of like, she's all, she just doesn't fit in quite with the Lost Boys because they're like, oh, we need a mother. We need this. We need all these like little kids elements and he she's just like you need to like slow down you need to mature and all kind of stuff so i found that really interesting that they have it in the original they do that well but i don't think in this one they do really well with seeing the somewhat character arc, arc of her but somewhat you do see it when you see her you know have to i think that's one of the greatest moments is when you have her so she jumps off the plank and then she has to think of happy thoughts to come back up again with the pixie dust and I love it how they have it so uh, she's instead of seeing all these happy thoughts of her childhood and all she see ha her happy thoughts of her growing up and living a life and getting old and dying and all like seeing that now she find she's silent to see that growing up is something that you can be happy about and that that's what raises her up again I someone did bring a, some people brought up a good point that and I didn't really notice about this because I was just caught up on the moment of oh that's really cool that they have it so shown her grow up as her happy thoughts that I didn't even pay attention to that the fact of the matter is none of those memories there showed her ever getting married having a family or anything it's just her she's she's just a woman boss and she's 
off doing her thing and then she dies alone and all kind of stuff. It's just like, I didn't know, like, when people brought that up, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's weird. Because the fact of the matter is, yeah, she probably did. She probably would want to be a mother. She probably would want to get married and have kids. I think that's a problem that we need to address here is that while, yes, we should empower our women and all, we should still say, hey, marriage is a good thing. I, I do get it that, I mean, some people want to be able to have this life outside of marriage and all. But the fact of the matter is we should put a little more emphasis on that mar that getting married and having that as part of your happy ending is a good thing. And honestly, the stress of just having to go at it alone would be too much eventually, right? Even, with, even while I like somewhat being by myself and I like being able to be a bachelor and work and not have to worry about providing for family and all that kind of stuff, I do really, really see the purpose of eventually getting married and eventually being able to have those people in your life that you mean not just you have to provide for, but also your support, right? Eventually, you mean saying stuff like, hey, honey, you mean I think about doing this thing, I mean, starting this new channel, new, I don't know, whatever it is, I mean, like, this new business, something like that, like, what's your thoughts about that? I mean, having someone to support you in it. Going out of life alone is sometimes can be really sad and very <laughs> lonely. And I, so the fact of the matter is this idea that uh, just showing her as grow up alone and be a badass and all, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of like, okay, but Disney, you need to understand that growing up, that having a family and all that kind of stuff, like, yeah, you should empower people, but you also should understand that Getting married is not a, a bad thing. It's not a sign of oppression at all, but it's a sign of like, I mean, true partnership with someone. And I think they should have shown that like, yeah, maybe you could make the argument. I don't know how old she's supposed to be that maybe she's not thinking too much about wanting to get married and she's just thinking about her life through the eyes of just herself and saying, what would I want to do with my life? And I think all the happy moments in my life and all. And so you could make the argument that that's where she's coming from, right? She's not coming from the point of that she's thinking about and eventually wants to get married and have kids. And I mean, so, you I mean, yeah, probably fine if she wants to, I mean, maybe not in that time period that it would have been allowed, but probably fine to say that, you I mean, I wanted to be a working mom and stuff like that. That's probably fine. And I'm not saying that everyone has to get married and that you can't live life without getting married. But the fact of the matter is, I think we need to get back to, I mean, showing that marriage is a good thing and that we should encourage it. Anyways, yeah, so that's a little bit of a rant off of the, I mean, something that I really didn't pay attention to because I was too caught up in how it was a really good character arc moment that I didn't even realize that they had kind of put a woke idea in there that's really just a problem with trying to empower women to the point that you're almost telling them that they have to be alone for the rest of their life because they can't be oppressed by a, uh, by a man who could want to help them, who would want to be there with them, be their partner for everything. Anyways, the next big point that after, like, I mean, Hook and his story behind Hook and all, how he's supposed to be an example of, you mean, why growing up is not a bad thing and why longing for your parents are not a bad thing, we come to the thing that Hook does. Now, this kind of happens in the original too, but in this one, they really put in, I, I was really shocked at that moment when they did that. And so if you guys haven't seen it yet, I'd strongly recommend you guys check out the movie before hearing about this because this is, this is pretty shocking. And I liked that. I liked it how it was like, whoa, they just did that. And that moment is when Hook comes upon Peter in the hideout. And in the normal one, they just made him, so he dropped off a present for Peter that has, I mean, a bomb in it. And Peter gets away before the bomb goes off. This one, Peter Pan is hiding in the rafters and he jumps down and Hook, and he says, you've always been good at hiding. And then Hook just says, but I've always been better at seeking. He runs around, slashes Peter across the chest and this shock look on, on the actor's face 
he does this great job playing Peter in that moment where he's just like, Hook, I don't like this game. And then he falls back to his death. And they, pr- they basically kill Peter in that moment. They kill him off. They literally, like, it doesn't really show any blood. In real life, it would probably have shown a lot more blood. And, I mean, but they made this a PG movie. And, but I thought that was really interesting. Like, the moment was like, whoa. And I thought, like, they did kind of do something like that. But they didn't make it as clear as in this one. They literally have it so he literally, like, slashes Peter Pan's chest open. And then Peter Pan falls a couple stories down to his death. In f- and then he like falls, his body falls in front of the Lost Boys. That's kind of, when you think about it, kind of a little bit gruesome. And, but also, they never showed anything too gruesome about it. But it was like, when you think about it, that is kind of like disturbingly like, and then you just have Hook like at the top of the stairs just staring down at him. Very like, very good moment where I was just like, wow. And that's when it comes into like, you know, the whole thing I said about how they really took out most of the Indians in this movie. That's in the one point where they bring back Tiger Lily, you know. I keep having her and she's not really, she doesn't really fit in with the story that much until this moment. Then the other ones all get captured. Guess what? The, the shadow of Peter Pan runs off to Tiger Lily and warns her what's going on. She comes there, heals him off, up so that he can go back and fight. But it's one of those moments where it's like, he's literally, they practically, for a second, I'm like, wait, oh, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna literally kill off Peter Pan in this? And somebody, like, what are they gonna do? But they had it so Tag Lily was able to bring him back. But it was one of those moments where it was just like, very, very like, whoa, like even more so than the original with like, just a bomb and never really could tell whether he got shot or not, whether he got hit or not. But this one, you, f- f- you, literally see him get slashed across the fur, uh, across the chest and fall a couple stories down to his death flop to the ground like a dead fish and i'm kind of thinking about also wait why doesn't he have all his bon- bones broken anyways <laughs> the point is that it was one of those moments where i was just really shocked and i really appreciated that moment some of the last things i want to mention is of course that the lost boys go ho- at the end of the story the lost boys go home with the darling kids and i don't feel like it was fully justified it was kind of like why did they go home in the original it made sense why they were like wanting to go home in this one they didn't really give a reason why, why they would want to go home in the original the reason why peter pan left the rest of the group and went on and sat by himself was because that they because when he was convincing them that they should go home and he's like oh yeah if you leave i'm gonna you know, kick you guys out. I mean, go leave you. I'm staying here. And it was, in this version, it was really just another moment that actually, I really liked the whole thing they had tied in with Peter Pan, how Peter Pan's like, oh, I can do this all by myself. I, I don't need help. You guys are just here to be my sidekicks. I don't need help. And when Hook's like, how did you survive? And then Peter Pan's like, it's by the help of friends. In that same point, it was like, they see that was a moment that was justified, right? And that's why when what that's why he was up in that room alone was because Wendy attacked uh, like actually I don't know what I don't know why they make it so Wendy just randomly slaps him in that moment, but they have it so she randomly slaps him after um the Pirates Cove and all, and they get into a whole argument about how he needs to have help and all with stuff. I don't know why this was the case, but they made it so that happened. But it was supposed to show off that he was kind of full of himself and he was kind of like, oh yeah, I can do this all by myself. And then I really kind of like it how they made Peter sympathetic a little bit more in this version than in the original. With that, I mean, the moment that Hook, that Peter Pan apologizes to Hook or James for being a bad friend. The moment that Peter Pan is, you know, sitting on the roof of the Darlin house and he's, you know, he mentions that that was actually the reason why he kept going back to that place was that was his original home. And that's why, like, even that, even that it was, like, he left his mother and that he really didn't actually, while he didn't want to go back to his mother, he still had a part of him that kept going back to that place and kept visiting that place because he missed his family somewhat. So I found that was really interesting. I thought, overall, I think this movie has its good moments and its bad moments. Again, 
when I first put that video out, I was kind of coming from the element of that was just, I like this movie. I thought that they did good stuff in this movie. And they do, they, they do a lot of good stuff in this movie. But I do admit that there's a lot of problems in the movie and it's definitely not perfect. And some of the stuff makes no sense.